McHale who gets a catch. He's got patrol. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast. We're here at SCC Sports at White Bear Lake South Campus, where Park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack is taking on the White Bear Lake Bears. And before the game starts, we're going to go a little bit into the coach's corner for the White Bear Lake Ultimate uh, football team, or Ultimate Frisbee team, excuse me, uh, with the White Bear Ultimate coach. <laughs> Welcome here inside the fourth edition of Coach's Corner here on Sports Path and SCC Sports. The snow has finally melted and activities have begun to move outside. So our edition of Coach's Corner this time, I'm with White Bear Lake Boys Ultimate Head Coach Curtis Kamek. Curtis, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Alex. Let's start a little bit with some of your experiences that you've had in Ultimate. Of course, we went to White Bear Lake High School together. We graduated together. Tell the folks at home a little bit about your experiences in Ultimate. So uh, I've been playing Ultimate for about 12 years now. Uh, I started as a freshman in high school, played all throughout high school. Then I went to the University of Minnesota Duluth, and uh, there I played for another four years. Uh, played club for two years, and then uh, now I've just been got, I've gotten into coaching. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what got you into coaching, and especially in this White Bear Lake program. Uh, so I was lucky, and I got a job in White Bear. So it was nice and close to home, so I knew, I knew the people in the program, so I could easily come back and coach. And then uh, I really like the game, uh, and I love teaching it. So that's, uh, that's why I wanted to get into coaching. Mm -hmm. So you've been a coach in White Bear Lake now for a couple of years. What's your most challenging aspect of coaching so far? Uh, we have a pretty short season. So uh, we start in middle of March, and then we go to the uh, first weekend in June. So uh, it's pretty short season, so we got to cram a lot of knowledge into a short amount of time. And speaking of cramming knowledge into that short period of time, describe how a practice for an ultimate program might look like. So typically you're going to do, you know, warm-up jog, plyos, and then you're going to get into drills for probably the majority of it, just working on different skills, uh, maybe some strategy, offense, defense, things like that. And then uh, the last portion of it, uh, you need to scrimmage. So kind of take what you learned in that practice and then apply it to game situations. So what does a successful player in practice look like to you and how does they translate that onto the field? Uh, someone who uh, just is at practice consistently, uh, giving a lot of effort, uh, open to new ideas. Most people, we most people we coach end up coming from other sports. They've never played ultimate before, uh, don't have a lot of experience with it, so they have to be very open to learning new things. Uh, a lot of skills that uh, transfer a little bit, but are just a little different than your typical sports. Well, as we mentioned in our open, the sun is out and the grass is finally visible again. Talk about the effect that weather has had on your program and the practices that you've been able to run. It has been tough. Uh, we were in the gym for, luckily we got gym time through White Bear, uh, so we were able to uh, use the gym time, but we were three teams crammed in a small amount of space. So. Uh, we've made the most of it, and we're just really excited to be back outside. So how did the practice plans modify from being outside to being inside? So uh, normally our practices are two hours, and they got shifted to uh, one-hour se se sessions. And so uh, practice time was reduced, and then just a significantly smaller space. Uh, our end zones are 20 yards by 40 yards, and that was about the size of the gym we were playing in. So uh, we lost about, you know, we're down to a fourth of a regular regulation field. Now we've been covering White Bear Lake Ultimate for a couple of seasons now. We've seen them in the conference championship game every single year that they have been in it. Curtis, talk with us about your players to watch in your varsity or even in your junior varsity and your women's teams. So uh, we've got some great players to watch. Uh, starting with my team, uh, the boys varsity, we've got uh, captain, uh, this is his third year being a captain, Danny Powell. Uh, 
just a fun player to watch. Really likes to have the disc in his hands, uh, a lot of quick movement with him. Uh, Kinseth Hicks is another one. He, uh, this is his first year being captain, but uh, he is, uh, he's a big, strong, athletic player who uh, loves to jump over people, uh, sky as we like to call it. And then uh, we've got Colin uh, Laffin and Tony Lucio, who are both uh, our senior handlers, also captains. And they do a lot of the throwing and just they're kind of the point guards of the field. Uh, the next question I wanted to ask you is, you see sports right now. There's tennis practice going on right next to us. There's lacrosse that's options as well, baseball, softball. What makes Ultimate a little bit different of a sport for somebody who might be interested in participating? So uh, one very different thing about Ultimate is it's a self-officiated sport. So every, so every player on the field is a ref, essentially. And so uh, and the whole game is... Uh, designed around the idea of spirit of the game, which basically boils down to sportsmanship. So uh, it's just a game that's based on sportsmanship. So everyone around the game is just playing off the idea of everyone's out here to have a good time. We, you don't want to intentionally cheat. You don't want to intentionally do anything uh, to make it a bad time for anyone out on the field. And do you think that has a positive impact on the game? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, the spirit of the game is crucial and uh, we've heard a lot of feedback with different players that uh, this game is just so much different than other sporting experiences they've had. At the start of our interview you mentioned the numerous years of experience of Ultimate that you had here in this program and then the University of Minnesota Duluth as well. Talk about how this program has changed since the first time you played here as a freshman in high school. Uh, well, one, our coaching staff. Uh, when I was playing we were lucky to have one coach per team. Uh, now we're looking at two to three coaches per team, which is amazing. Uh, so we can do a lot more one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching and just really just get through more. Like I said, we have a short season, so the more coaches you can have giving that information, just the more information you can go. And the, really the skill level has increased. Uh, I don't know if I could keep up with some of these high schoolers when I was playing. Uh, they, the game has really grown, and it's really fun to see where what I know, what I, when it was when I was in high school compared to what it is now, just amazing how much it's grown. One of those changes, of course, the addition of lettering at the high school level, and then additionally the, in, the welcoming of a women's program here at Wiper Lake High School. Talk about how that change has helped boost this program. Oh, it's great. Um, the, having a women's program is awesome because uh, a lot of times, not that women can't play with guys, but it, sometimes it's tough for them to shine. And so now that we have a women's program, it's really nice that our top players can be uh, the top player on the field, no matter what. And of course, the last question to wrap things up, Ultimate, a new developing program all across the United States. Talk about what advice you would have to different coaches or different players. Oh, uh, if you have the time, it's a great experience. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to get outside. That's one of the main, big reasons I do it. Um, yeah, it just it's fun uh, to help players who you can relate to. Uh, I relate to these people because I was in their shoes at one point. So uh, it's just really fun giving back to the community. We want to thank head coach Curtis Kamek for joining us here on Coach's Corner. Curtis, thank you for joining us and welcoming us out here to your practice. Thanks for having me, Alex. This is your home for White Bear Lake boys, girls, and junior varsity ultimate SCC sports. Welcome back, everybody. We're here at White Bear Lake campus for the White Bear Lake game against Park. We'd like to thank Coach Kurt for that interview on Coach's Corner. As always, that will be on Sports Path live tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Also, Friday night, we are covering the White Bear, or not the, we are covering the Classic Suburban Conference Championship at 7 p.m., and that will be live uh, for the Ultimate Frisbee game. And now let's get into the girls lacrosse standings. As you can see, Parker Cottage Grove had an outstanding year. They're five and one uh, in the conference, ten and one overall, undefeated in their non-conference games. If we take a look at White Bear Lake, they're one and four in conference, two and six overall, having a down year so far. And they'll definitely have to rise to the occasion tonight as they take on the Park of Cottage Grove Wolfpack, who are just playing outstanding. We're going to take players to watch for Park. We got. Number 28, Kayla Quaid, the junior middle infielder, midfielder. She's got 29 points on the year. 
but she got 37 points of the year, 29 goals and eight assists. She's absolutely having an outstanding year. Uh, let's take a look over at White Bear Lake star player to watch. And that is number 28, junior midfielder Dow. Dow is having a great year herself. She has 21 goals and two assists on the year. She's absolutely playing outstanding. Tonight is youth night at the stadium, so a little more packed than usual for the girls lacrosse games. There's Dow. She's gonna really need to have a great game, lots of goals tonight in order to compete with Park. And the weather tonight's looking absolutely beautiful. 74, little to no wind tonight. Beautiful sunny day here at White Bear Lake Stadium. Just a great night for girls lacrosse. If you're not, if you did not make it out here, you're surely missing out if you're watching this live on your TVs right now. And we're, we're just wrapping up the players, uh, players being introduced. And now we're gonna go to the national anthem. In the honor of the United States of America, please join the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Great rendition of the national anthem, and we're about to get underway here at White Bear Lake Stadium, as we just talked about. Just a beautiful, sunny day tonight. And there's the goalie for Park High School, Jaylee Hendrickson. She's 9-1 in the year, only allowing 4.43 goals uh, on the year. She's a 59% save percentage. Just absolutely outstanding goalie so far this year for the Park Wolfpack. And I expect her to have just a dominant game once again tonight against this White Bear Lake team that has a little trouble scoring. We'll take a look at the White Bear Lake goalie. We got a great matchup ahead of us tonight, so what I'd like you to do is sit back, relax. Fasten Here's the White Bear Lake goalie yeah. this year. Barn burner coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen, say those three words with me. Let's play. As you can see, it's youth night here tonight, and there's a lot of a lot of girls down there in that huddle getting the White Bear Lake team amped up. There's number 15. Cassidy Blank in the middle of that, just getting the White Bear Lake team amped up. They're really going to have to arise to the occasion tonight. And this is, should be an outstanding game if, if White Bear Lake can play how they have the past few years. Yeah, it looks like Park is going to have their backup goalie in tonight, or White Bear Lake is going to have their backup goalie in tonight. They got Brittany Johnson, number one. Johnson has only allowed eight goals this year. She's got a save percentage of 20%, so not what you'd really like to see. Uh, Johnson is, uh, it's Johansson, excuse me, is a senior. Likely having a little senior night tonight. We're about to get this one underway, and the ball is about to be dropped here. And 
And Park will get this one. Looks like we're going to have an early penalty here. And the ball will be dropped, and Park will be on the attack. Looks like number 36. Tina Press will have it. She's got it around the net. Now it's over to Olivia Kahn's. Kahn's looking to make a move on the inside. Trying to work her way into the crease, but she'll throw it behind the net. Number 18, Michaela Cron has it now. And she'll throw it out to Kayla Quaid. Kayla Quaid having an outstanding year so far this year. Gets it over to Elton. Elton gets into the crease, but loses the ball. Nice pick up there by Brittany Johansson to get White Bear Lake the ball. White Bear Lake looking to move it down. Park with some heavy pressure. And they're working their way down. Now it's on number 20, Sydney Peterson. Peterson looking to drive to the net. Now she's behind the net. She gets it over to 24. That's Lexi Perron. Lexi Perron nets the first goal of the game, but it looks like this one's not going to count. Looks like a little bit of an offsides here. No goal. And that negates what would have been a hot start to this one for the White Bear Lake Bears. As you can see she just dumps it in. Looks like they not too sure what it was, but Park's going to make their way down the field. Looks like that's number one, Mandy Elton. You have another stoppage of play here. Looks like the ball stay with Park. Now goes to White Bear Lake, number 24 has got it. Lexi Perrin, and she just had that goal that was nixed out of the way. Looks like White Bear Lake's trying to start up tempo. Number 17, Danny Larson looks to drive past the net. She's got it behind now. She gets it to Dow. That one will be missed. Nice save there. Park will toss it out downfield. This one to Olivia Kahn's. Kahn's works her way down. Streaking. Little shove there by the White Bear Lake defender, and that's going to be a penalty. Minimal contact is allowed in girls lacrosse. So it'll stay park ball. So park will start with it. Looks like this one is stolen by number 23, McKeeley Loren. McKeeley Larson, excuse me. Lexi Perrin has it. She gets it out to Cassidy Blank. Cassidy Blank gets it over, but it looks like that one's mishandled by Perrin. Scooped up by Sydney Peterson. Peterson throws it behind the net to Danny Larson. Back over to Dow. Dow looking to make something happen early on in the early going. Kind of just walking it out. Park's got a steady defense there, blocking the attack zone. She throws it over to number eight, Sally Morris. Park just really congesting that offensive zone on defense. Blank's got it now at the top of the top of the attack zone. She throws it down. We got a loose ball. Dow's got it now. She throws it in, and that's a goal. One to nothing, White Bear Lake to start the game. And that's why Dow, as we talked about earlier, she would have to have a great game in order to keep this one going. That is now her 22nd goal on the year. Dow just throws it right where the goalie couldn't see it. Gets her first goal of the game. And as we talked about, Park's goalie has been outstanding. Number 88, Jaylee Hendrickson. 59% save percentage compared to that with White Bear Lakes. She's absolutely fantastic, and that's what you want to see if you're White Bear Lake. Get this, get this going. Start off a little hotter, as they already had another goal that was negated earlier. 
So nice start if you're if you wipe your lake and that's what you want to keep going. And we'll have a face off and Dow's almost got it, but she loses it. Mandy Elton was there. So Dow's going to get it, and they're going to throw it down the field. And Park gets it right back. That's Taryn Leonard. wonder if she's related to the head coach. Scott Leonard. In light of allergy season, we're just going to do one big blanket. Bless you. Some funny commentary there. Talking about allergy season. And Park looks the way to make, make their way to the net. Wiper Lake scoops it up, the loose ball. And once again, the Wiper Lake defense looking good early on. This one will be scooped up. Alexi Perrin looking to make something going down the field. She'll come down the near side. Nice little juke there. She'll get it out to Peterson. Peterson throws it behind the net to Johansson. Or excuse me, Churchill. Churchill go to the far side. She throws it towards the middle. And that's Perrin, and she shoots and misses. Nice stop there by the park goaltender. This one will go out to Blank. Blank's got it at the top of the attack zone. She throws it in the middle to a streaking Danny Larson. Looks like we're going to get a penalty here on Wolfpack number 11, Marie, Marie Brookins. As you can see, almost a great shot right here. Nice stop there by the defender, or by the goaltender. Doesn't even look like she saw it. Nonetheless, got the body in the way. And that's a save. Taryn Leonard has it. Looking to get the ball moved to Mandy Elton. Elton's got it on the far side. looking for somebody to make a move. Over to Press. Press comes down the middle, looking to take a shot here. Ball knocked out. Looks like we're going to get some sort of penalty on White Bear Lake here, and Park's going to maintain possession. So it looks like Press will start out with it. She looks for a shot on the net, and she gets that one to go in. This one's all tied up. Park one, White Bear Lake one. Too easy of a shot, if, if you're telling me. I mean, Press just had an easy lane to the net. You'll see right here, looks like she had a, a free shot on goal, or penalty shot, and that one goes in. Wolfpack goal. Those are, you, know, you really can't stop that if you're a goaltender, and it's unfortunate that a penalty sets that up if you're White Bear Lake. But nonetheless, great job by Park taking advantage of penalties. So we'll get ready for another face off here. Looks like Park's gonna come away with possession on the face off. That's press. She's gonna come streaking down the near side. Defender's not really stepping up. She's got a wide open Park player right in the middle of the field, but nonetheless, she dropped the ball. And press picks back up. Now she's got it behind the net here. Looking to make something happen. Goes to the far side. Tried to make a little dash in the middle, but nonetheless. Park works it back behind the net. That's a Victoria Michaud. Now it's number eight, Kayla Quaid. This one's taken away by a nice defensive play there by White Bear Lake, and they're gonna go the other way. Now it's smacked out of her hands, and it's gonna be a penalty here by Park, so White Bear Lake will maintain possession. Jesse Grons, now we got a loose ball here. 
Dow is going to run towards it. Not fast enough, however. And it looks like this one's going to be knocked out. It's going to be heading its park ball. Carly House will throw this one in. She eats it out to Taryn Leonard. Leonard here on the near side. She gets it over to Michaela Cron. Cron works her way towards the net. Now behind the net. Gets it on the far side, air it pass. Loose ball, and looks like Press is going to come up with it. Over to Quaid. Quaid looking to make something happen. She's going to have to press. Press throws it in, and that's a goal. Two to one, Park. Nice move there by Press. Quaid with the assist. Right, nice move right here. Defender seemed to not know which way Quaid was going, or Press was going. She could have easily defended that, not setting her goalie up for a good shot. Press gets the second goal of the game here for Park. So Blank will get ready for the face-off. Here we go. So we're gonna have a redo of the face-off here. Looks like we're gonna have a timeout here. I think we got a bloody player, or something along the wrist of Cassidy Blank. Or a penalty on Blake, and looks like Park's going to start out with the ball. Quaid's got it, looks to make a move, and this one's stolen away by Blank, and they're going to call a penalty here on Blank. Quaid's got it now, and she'll streak down the middle of the field. Looking for someone to throw to. Looks like she's going to take this one herself. Doesn't take a shot, however. We've got another penalty here by White Bear Lake. Lots of whistles being blown early on, folks. So Quaid will start out with it at about 10 feet from the net. She'll have an open shot if she wants it. And she does, she takes it, and that one's just bounced off. Nice save there by the White Bear Lake goaltender, Joe Hansen. Now Park's got it behind the net. Cron has it. Works it out to Waters. Waters gets it out to Quaid. Out to Press on the far side. Press looking to make something happen. She's been very active early on. Gets it back to Quaid. Press has got it now. Looking to make something happen. Tight D by White Bear Lake. So we're gonna have another penalty by White Bear Lake here. And Park will reset. 14 minutes left to go here in the first. And Press is gonna have a free shot here. She runs and a nice, def nice stop there by Johansson. If you ask me, I think Press waited a little too long. Should have rifled that in right away. She had a much easier shot on goal. Quaid's got it behind the net, looking to make something happen. Throws it in. Nice save once again by Johansson. Johansson making some outstanding stops. Lots of balls coming in from up close. Cron has it now. Gets it out to Mashad. Stolen away by White Bear Lake, and they'll look to make something happen. Lots of time possession down in their defensive zone, looking to make the same thing happen against Park. And a congested throw, not, not what you want to see. And Park will pick it back up. Waters has it now, so now she gets it out to Quaid. Quaid looking to make something happen on the net, and they're going to have a high sticking penalty. White Bear Lake smacking towards her head. 
So Quaid will have it in front of the net. Quaid looking to make a move. She brings it to the far side, throws it in. Blocked. Wiper Lake throws it out, gets stolen by Press. Press smacked in the head, no call. Wiper Lake steals the ball. And looks like the whistle was called. Looks like Press will have it. Ref did call that one, just a little bit late on that whistle. So Press will look to start here. 12 minutes left to go here in the first half. Press has got it now once again at the top. Gets it out to Quaid. Quaid looking to make a move. Park's leading scorer. Brings it up to the far side. Gets pushed down and that's gonna be called every time. Looks like they'll get Cassidy Blank once again. Now Quaid will have a shot at the net here if she wants it. Not the best of angles, but Quaid's gonna take it and she's gonna go up close to the net. That one's saved. Looks like we have another penalty here and Park's gonna start out with it again. Quaid's gonna have the ball at the top of the net. Let's see what happens here. Quaid with a nice move, yep, high sticking to the head and that's gonna be called every time. So Quaid once again, free shot, no defenders in her face, rifles it in, nice. That was a nice shot. Not be able to stop by Johansson. And Quaid is on the board with a goal. Three to one park now. After a really hot start there by White Bear Lake. Not answering back on defense and Quaid just throws it in, skips it right past Johansson. It's really tough to stop that ball when it's pretty close. We'll get a timeout here with 10.56 left to go in the Wolf first half. Goal. Scored by number eight, Kayla Quaid. Quaid scoring at 14.04 of the period for the Wolfpack. So Wiper Lake needs to figure out how to get back on the offensive side of the zone. And there's coach Scott Leonard, head coach of girls lacrosse for Park High School. Also a math teacher at Park. He's got these girls to a 10 and one record, five and one in conference. Right now they only trail Creighton Durham Hall. In the standings, Creighton Durham Hall six and zero. Oh. White Bear Lake or, or Park, excuse me, lost to Creighton Durham Hall on May eighth. Four to eight. There's Colleen Dunnigan, the coach of the girls' cross for White Bear Lake, trying to write, trying to you know really get her team going here. After they started out pretty hot, not much going on the offensive side of the zone and the defense, really lacking here. So as I said, 10:56 left to go in this conference game. Suburban East, a tough conference. Stillwater sitting there, tied with Park, five and one as well. Park plays Stillwater the last game of the year, so that could come down to who wins the conference championship, depending on if Creighton can lose a game. And Park and Stillwater keep winning. So it looks like we're ready for the faceoff here after a timeout by Wiper Lake. Looks like we'll have Blank against Michaud. Like almost wins that one and they'll see. Looks like we're gonna have a high sticking here. This one's gonna be on Wiper Lake and it's Park's ball. So we'll have number one, we'll have it, Mandy Elton. We'll start this one off here. Elton streaks down to the far side. Makes a spin move on the inside. Gets it over to Michaud. Michaud makes a move towards the middle. Nothing going. Back out to press. 
Nobody impressed his face. She can, she can hurt you if she wants to. Back out to Elton. Elton looks to make a move. She dodges some defenders. Loses the ball, however. Nice defense by Wiper Lake to get the ball back. Aaron pass there, and it looks like Park is going to recover. Park's going to make a move, and they'll score. That was a goal by number 23, Madeline Waters. Park just 25, excuse me, Olivia Kahn's. Nice goal there by Kahn's. Kahn's makes a nifty move. Goal. Gets close to the net, just Olivia fires Kahn. it in. Nothing you can do there if you're Johansson. Great move by Park. Clock stops at 9.56. Park's up 4-1, to and they're on a 4-0 run ever since White Bear Lake started off the game with the first goal. And they had another one that was called back, which really hurts them. We'll look to see if they can refine that magic, or else this one's going to be blocked quickly, folks. And Blank wins the faceoff. Perrin's got it now. She had the goal called back. Now she gets it over to number four, Churchill. Churchill's stri streaking down the far side. She'll work her way behind the net. Trying to find somebody open here. Now they'll get it back to Perrin. Back to Churchill. It looks like they're gonna run some sort of play here. They got three streaking, four streaking players working their way towards the net. None of them were able to come open. Park with great defense right there. Churchill has to make a move herself. She works it out to Perrin at the top. Very stagnant offense here by Wiper. Like Perrin looks to make a move. Defenders right there. Once again, Perrin tries to make another move towards the net. Stopped by Park's defense. She'll eventually work her way behind the net. Get to the far side, try to find another defender. And we've got a loose ball here, picked back up by White Bear Lake, and that's number 17. Victoria. Danny Larson, she gets it in the net. Great move there by Larson to get White Bear Lake their second goal of the game. Hear the music blaring here at Viper Lake Stadium. Larson, you'll see right here, she picks up the loose ball, works her way towards the net, squeezes in between defenders using that small frame to just cut right through, and she gets it right past the, the goaltender, Jaylee Hendrickson. Hendrickson coming in, only allowing 4.4 goals per game, so not even 4.5, you're rounding up, that's five. She's averaging four goals a game. Outstanding goaltender, but Larson made uh, made work of her right there. Of the period for the Bears. We'll get ready for the face-off here now. Blank is going to win it, but unfortunately it goes the other way. But she gets it right back. We get a lost stick penalty, and now Park will get it. Unfortunately, there for Blank, she had a nice steal right there, just high sticking just a little bit. Quaid's going to work her way down the middle of the field. She passes the defender. Nice steal for Wiper Lake. Perrin's got it. She's streaking down the near side, and she's going to burn her defender. Trying to out-hustle him. She'll work her way behind the net. Looking to get something going, trying to cut this lead to one. She'll pass it up to the far side, Dow. Dow doesn't have a player over the middle, so she'll take it. She'll keep it herself. Aaron pass, nice scoop up there by the Park goaltender. Park's looking to make their way out of their zone. Emma Henderson now has it on the far side. She's running down the field, trying to get it out of their defensive zone, trying to strike back on offense, trying to get this lead back to three. And she's still running. She's down the middle of the field. She's got to shoot it, right? Unfortunately, it's knocked out by White Bear Lake. 
nice move there by Henderson. Great hustle, unfortunately. She wasn't able to cap it off of the goal. Looks like Park will start it. Now B. Henderson, she's gonna have a shot on the goal here, a free one. Can she get it? And she misses. So Park will have it on the near side here, and we're trying to work their way towards the net, trying to find some magic on offense that they continue to have early on. They'll get behind the net, errant pass. Scoop back up by, nope, not going to be scooped up here. And Mike Lake's got it. Errant pass in front of the net, and Park's going to shoot it. Nice stop there by Johansson. We're going to have a high sticking on Park. Kayla Coons over there for White Bear Lake. She'll throw it out towards the middle. Scooped up by Peterson. Peterson streaking down the near side. There we get another penalty by Park here. And White Bear Lake will maintain possession. So Peterson will have it. She'll look to throw it in. She's going to streak. She's got an open lane. If she can get and work her way through there, we're going to have another high sticking here by Quaid. So Peterson will start with it where she's at. there to Churchill and Mike Bell Lake tries to maintain possession. Dow's got it now. Gets it to Peterson. Peterson throws it in. That's a goal. Wiper Lake only down by one. Four to three now. Just what you needed if you're Wiper Lake. Two goals unanswered to cut this lead to one. Great ball movement. Great pass by Dow to Peterson to get this one in. As you can see Dow finds Peterson. Peterson throws it in the bottom of the net right where Hendrickson was. And as we talked about, Hendrickson's only come into this game allowing four goals per game. So she's one away. Just what you needed if you're White Bear Lake. And we'll see if they can tie this one up here. We're going to have a face-off. Park's putting Quaid on their face-off. So I think that means they mean business. It'll be Quaid versus Blank. Quaid, 37 points on the year. Leading score, 29 goals, eight assists. She did have that goal tonight, so she is at 30. Peterson, it's her 11th goal on the year. And Park's gonna get the face off. Looks like he's gonna stay with Park. Mandy Elton will take it. And we'll resume play here and gets it over to Quaid in the Middle of the field, Quaid streaks down the center. Looking to make something happen. Over to press. Back to Quaid. Quaid looking to shoot it. Looking for a lane, doesn't see it. Should get it out to Cron. Over to Elton. Back to Quaid. Looks like they're gonna try to ISO Quaid here and she's gonna look her way towards the net. Looks like we're gonna have a penalty on White Bear Lake here. So we're gonna have a timeout. 
3.17 left to go in the half. Quaid will start with the, the top here on the far side. Top of the attack zone. So Quaid will have it. Free shot on the net. Quaid makes her move, throws it in, and that's another goal for Quaid. That's two on the day. It's now five to three, Park. Quaid with a nice move right here, taking her time. Nice pump fake, throws it in past Johansson. And Park's now regained, the, regained a two goal lead here in the late first period. But if you're White Bear Lake, you gotta be feeling good. But where you sit in this game against a team that has a record of five and one in conference, 10 and one overall. And we'll have a face off in the middle. We'll have Dow and Quaid, the players to watch for the game. Looks like Quaid's gonna win that one. And we'll, we'll have a redo right here. Both these girls having outstanding years. Dow with a great assist earlier. Quaid with that great goal that we had about 20 seconds ago. We got another redo here. Here we go. And Dow wins this one. Gets the ball. Looks like we're gonna have a Penalty on Park, so Dow will keep it where she stands. Dow looking to make a move herself. Works on the far side. Double teamed over there. So you got to Morris. Dow streaks towards the middle, no, nothing going. Morris throws it in. Player, Wiper Lake player gets absolutely trucked by Addie Stanky for Park. And that'll be a penalty, he'll stay with Wiper Lake. And they'll have a free shot on it. Nice save by Park. Press looks to have the ball, she loses it. Wiper Lake is gonna pick it back up here. That's much, that is uh, Larson. Larson throws in the net, it almost goes in. Park picks it up. Press is gonna streak down on the near side with it. Misses Leonard, and that's gonna roll out of bounds. Now it's gonna be White Bear Ball. Great save there by Hendrickson. Hendrickson, as we talked about, just outstanding this year. As a goaltender, Hendrickson just a junior, so Park's gonna enjoy here for another year after this one. Perrin's gonna take this one towards the net on the near side. Now she works her way behind the net. And then she throws this one in. Nice move by Perrin. I don't think anybody was expecting her to shoot. She kinda just throws it over the top of the defenders. Cuts the lead to one once again. Let's take a look at this one. Perrin kind of just works way behind the net. You'll see Dow streak towards the middle. Just the goalie, Hendrickson, comes out there to defend, and Perrin throws it right on top of her. Nothing you can do if you're Hendrickson on that one if you're the goalie. Perrin, nice awareness to see that she was uncovered. Throws it right in. The defense was sucked in. As they saw, uh, Bears goal scored by number 24. As they saw Let's Dow see. streaking towards the net, and Perrin just throws it in. So it's a one goal game here at White Bear Lake Stadium and Dow's gonna go ahead with Quaid, two best players on both teams. Quaid just a junior. Dow's gonna have it. Dow's a senior, Dow, senior works her way down. Gives it out to Perrin. Gives it up to Morris. Morris works her way towards the near side. Up to Larson. One minute remaining in the half. 
One minute remaining in the half, just called. Dow's got it behind the net, looking to make something going, trying to tie this one up. She's got a streaking White Bear Lake player, errant throw there by Blank. 44 seconds left to go and counting. So Perrin's got to get something going here. Excuse me. That was Peterson behind the net. Peterson looks for Dow, misses her. Parks got it back up. They'll work their way out, and that's Leonard. Leonard working her way down the middle of the field. So Wiper Lake with a missed opportunity on their offensive side of the zone. Leonard works away in the tack zone. Works away behind the net now, looking to try to get one more goal. They got it once again behind the net. Five seconds to go. They're gonna have a shot. No, nothing going there. And that's gonna be the end of the half, folks. And the score of five to four at halftime here. And great job to answer back after being down three to one. It's now five to four. Wiper Lake found some of that offense that they had here at the beginning of the game. They found it in the uh, the late first period to cut this lead to one. Got to be feeling great at halftime. You're only down by one to an impressive Park Cottage Grove team with a great goaltender of Jaylee Hendrickson. And now, folks, if you missed the coach's corner in the first or before the start of the game, we're going to replay that now with the Wiper Lake Ultimate Coach as we'll be covering the Classic Suburban uh, Conference Championship this Friday live at 7 p.m. <laughs> Welcome here inside the fourth edition of Coach's Corner here on Sports Path and SCC Sports. The snow has finally melted and activities have begun to move outside. So our edition of Coach's Corner this time, I'm with White Bear Lake Boys Ultimate Head Coach Curtis Kamek. Curtis, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Alex. Let's start a little bit with some of your experiences that you've had in Ultimate. Of course, we went to White Bear Lake High School together. We graduated together. Tell the folks at home a little bit about your experiences in Ultimate. So uh, I've been playing Ultimate for about 12 years now. Uh, I started as a freshman in high school, played all throughout high school. Then I went to the University of Minnesota Duluth, and uh, there I played for another four years. Uh, played club for two years, and then uh, now I've just been got, I've gotten into coaching. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what got you into coaching, and especially in the Swipe Bear Lake program. Uh, so I was lucky, and I got a job in White Bear. So it was nice and close to home, so I knew, I knew the people in the program, so I could easily come back and coach. And then uh, I really like the game, uh, and I love teaching it. So that's, uh, that's why I wanted to get into coaching. Mm -hmm. So you've been a coach in White Bear Lake now for a couple of years. What's your most challenging aspect of coaching so far? Uh, we have a pretty short season. So uh, we start in middle of March, and then we go to the uh, first weekend in June. So uh, it's pretty short season, so we got to cram a lot of knowledge into a short amount of time. And speaking of cramming knowledge into that short period of time, describe how a practice for an ultimate program might look like. So typically you're going to do, you know, warm-up jog, plyos, and then you're going to get into drills for probably the majority of it, just working on different skills, uh, maybe some strategy, offense, defense, things like that. And then uh, the last portion of it, uh, you need to scrimmage. So kind of take what you learned in that practice and then apply it to game situations. So what does a successful player in practice look like to you and how does they translate that onto the field? Uh, someone who uh, just is at practice consistently, uh, giving a lot of effort, uh, open to new ideas. Most people, we play, most people we coach end up coming from other sports. They've never played ultimate before, uh, don't have a lot of experience with it, so they have to be very open to learning new things. Uh, a lot of skills that uh, transfer a little bit, but are just a little different than your typical sports. Well, as we mentioned in our open, the sun is out and the grass is finally visible again. Talk about the effect that weather has had on your program and the practices that you've been able to run. It has been tough. Uh, we were in the gym for, luckily we got gym time through White Bear. Uh, so we were able to uh, use the gym time, but we were three teams crammed in a small amount of space. So. Uh, we've made the most of it, and we're just really excited to be back outside. So how did the practice plans modify from being outside to being inside? 
So uh, normally our practices are two hours and they got shifted to uh, one hour se se sessions. And so uh, practice time was reduced and then just a significantly smaller space. Uh, our end zones are 20 yards by 40 yards and that was about the size of the gym we were playing in. So uh, we lost about, you know, we're down to a fourth of a regular regulation field. Now we've been covering White Bear Lake Ultimate for a couple of seasons now. We've seen them in the conference championship game every single year that they have been in it. Curtis, talk with us about your players to watch in your varsity or even in your junior varsity and your women's teams. So uh, we've got some great players to watch. Uh, starting with my team, uh, the boys varsity, we've got uh, captain, uh, this is his third year being a captain, Danny Powell. Uh, just a fun player to watch, really likes to have the disc in his hands, uh, a lot of quick movement with him. Uh, Kinseth Hicks is another one. He, uh, this is his first year being captain, but uh, he is, uh, he's a big, strong, athletic player who uh, loves to jump over people, uh, sky as we like to call it. And then uh, we've got Colin uh, Laffin and Tony Lucio, who are both uh, our senior handlers, also captains and they do a lot of the throwing and just they're kind of the point guards of the field. Uh, the next question I wanted to ask you is you see sports right now there's tennis practice going on right next to us there's lacrosse that's options as well baseball softball what makes ultimate a little bit different of a sport for somebody who might be interested in participating? So uh, one very different thing about ultimate is it's a self-officiated sport so every so every player on the field is a ref essentially and so uh, and the whole game is uh, designed around the idea of spirit of the game, which basically boils down to sportsmanship. So uh, it's just a game that's based on sportsmanship. So everyone around the game is just playing off the idea of everyone's out here to have a good time. We, you don't want to intentionally cheat. You don't want to intentionally do anything uh, to make it a bad time for anyone out on the field. And do you think that has a positive impact on the game? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, the spirit of the game is crucial, and uh, we've heard a lot of feedback with different players that uh, this game is just so much different than other sporting experiences they've had. At the start of our interview, you mentioned the numerous years of experience of Ultimate that you had here in this program and then the University of Minnesota Duluth as well. Talk about how this program has changed since the first time you played here as a freshman in high school. Uh, well, one, our coaching staff. Uh, when I was playing, we were lucky to have one coach per team. Uh, now we're looking at two to three coaches per team, which is amazing. Uh, so we can do a lot more one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching and just really just get through more. Like I said, we have a short season, so the more coaches you can have giving that information, just the more information you can go. And the, really the skill level has increased. Uh, I don't know if I could keep up with some of these high schoolers when I was playing. Uh, they, the game has really grown, and it's really fun to see where what I know what I, when it was when I was in high school compared to what it is now, just amazing how much it's grown. One of those changes, of course, the addition of lettering at the high school level, and then additionally the, in, the welcoming of a women's program here at Wiper Lake High School. Talk about how that change has helped boost this program. Oh, it's great. Um, the, having a women's program is awesome because uh, a lot of times, not that women can't play with guys, but it's, sometimes it's tough for them to shine. And so now that we have a women's program, it's really nice that our top players can be uh, the top player on the field, no matter what. And of course, the last question to wrap things up, Ultimate, a new developing program all across the United States. Talk about what advice you would have to different coaches or different players. Oh, uh, if you have the time, it's a great experience. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to get outside. That's one of the main, big reasons I do it. Um, yeah, it just it's fun uh, to help players who you can relate to. Uh, I relate to these people because I was in their shoes at one point. So uh, it's just really fun giving back to the community. We want to thank head coach Curtis Kamek for joining us here on Coach's Corner. Curtis, thank you for joining us and welcoming us out here to your practice. Thanks for having me, Alex. This is your home for White Bear Lake boys, girls, and junior varsity ultimate SCC sports. Welcome back, everybody. We got a five to four score here with about a minute left in halftime. Wiper Lake with a little bit of a rally to cut this lead to one against a very good park team. Now we're going to take a look at all the goals and how we got here. 
And this one, first goal of White Bear Lake by Dow. Dow with a great shot right there. Now we're going to have press for Park. She guns it right in there off the penalty. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for youth. And Press gets the second goal as well, attacking the middle of the, attacking the middle and throws it right over the goalie. Quaid, this one, throws it right in the net. Park with another goal right here. Cons. Cons with a nice move. Then, uh, then we're going to have Larson here. And then we're going to have Sidney Peterson just rifles it right in, bottom of the net. Now, once again, we'll have Park Quaid. Quaid making outstanding moves all over the game to try to run a few ISOs. Then we're going to have Perrin there. Throws it right over the goalie's head. As you can see, she's amped up about that goal. Got to be happy when you're only down by one against one of the best teams in your conference. As we talked about, White Bear Lake 1-4 in conference, 2-6 and six overall. Park 5-1, and 10-1 and one overall. One of the best teams in state. So White Bear Lake holding their own, and they got to like what they saw in that first half, and they need to really keep up with that intensity. Lots of great defensive plays. The only thing they needed to cut back down on, lots of penalties in that first half. Gave Park open lanes to the net to just get free shots at, and they really took advantage of it. So now Park and White Bear Lake are swapping sides. It's time for so White Bear Lake will attack from right to left, Park from left to right. We'll have the face off here. It's going to be Quaid against Blank here for White Bear Lake. Quaid got her way up to 31 goals on the year, now 39 points. An outstanding year with two games left to go for Park. White Bear, which is tonight, Stillwater, who's tied with them in the conference on the 22nd. So here's the face off. Looks like Dow's going to come up with it. Let's see what she can do. She's going to streak down the near side here. Triple teamed. Needs to find somebody else. Works it back out. Gets it to 46. Coons. Coons works it over to blank. And they'll throw it in the middle. That's number four. Rifles in. That one's not going to start. Looks like they're going to call a high sticking penalty there. And that's a great penalty by Park in order to stop a free shot on the net. Churchill was going to have a wide open shot one-on-one -on -one against the goalie. Now she's going to have a wide open shot here, and she scores. This one's all tied up, folks. Five to five. Churchill, one-on-one -on -one against the goalie. Free shot there. 30 seconds in, and we got a goal, folks, and this is all tied up. Let's see Churchill. Let's see how the magic happened right here to tie this one up. Just works her way. Throws it right in. Skip pass. It tends to be the... Ideal shot when you're looking for those one-on-ones. Just throw it low. Goalies are going to expect a decent bounce. Does not bounce. Nice little skip into the bottom of the net. This one's tied, folks. And Quaid's going to face off against Clark once again, or Blank once again. Bears goal scored by number four, Mariah. Churchill! Churchill's first goal of the game. Churchill scoring at 43 seconds of the period for the Bear. And Park's going to work their press. Nice stop there by Johansson. Park will continue to work. Kron's got it behind the net. Works way out to the far side, trying to make a move on goal. Doesn't. Parks working their way. Looks like we have a penalty here. So Park will have a shot on the net. That's 19, Mackenzie Lawrence. She throws it in. And that's a goal. Lawrence with her first goal of the day. And Park regains the lead. 
So we're about a minute and a half into the second half. Two goals already. One by Wiper Lake, one by the Wolfpack. Let's see Larson's shot right here. Excuse me, Lawrence's shot. Nice, nice little, nice little work there. And we'll take a face off once again. High scoring here in this one, or quick scoring here in this one and start the second half. Quaid looking to win a face off. And she will, she'll get her own her own shot, looking to make something happen. I think we're gonna get a high sticking here by Wiper Lake and Quaid will start off right where she's got it right now. Well, a little towards the middle of the field, so Quaid gets it on the far side. Gets to press, press with two goals in the first half. Looking to make get third. She'll throw it in and that's a goal. Nice move by Press. Third goal of the night as I just talked about. Nice move there. She knew she was going to the hole the whole time on that one. Nice move here, quick speed. Throwing it in. Goaltender wasn't expecting to go there. She throws it far pocket. Gets it in there. So once again, we'll have a face off. Three goals here in the first two minutes. Two by Park, one by Wiper Lake, and Wiper Lake needs to answer back. And Park's getting this hot offensively to start this half. They need to get their offense going as well. Wiper Lake's got it now. Nice steal there by Press. Gets it taken away from her, but Park regains possession. Press is streaking down the middle of the field once again, looking for goal number four tonight. Press now with 22 goals on the year. Park works it towards the middle of the field. That's Cron. Scores again. That's Mandy Elton. Elton gets her for her first goal of the game. Park is on a four to one run here. And Press just goal. Elton just takes Score that one in. One, Elton. Elton at Excuse me, three to one now. Timeout. In this half, timeout. Wipe our lake. Five to four the start of this half, eight to five now. Park really starting on hot. And folks, we always want to remind you, you can volunteer here at SCC TV. You can call the number listed at the screen or email Arlen Becker at his email, Arlen at SCC TV. There's one of our handsome cameramen. Always good looking group of bunch here. You know, you get free subway, free camera work. Can learn on the job, whether you're going to college or just looking to volunteer for your kids' games. We're always looking for volunteers here at SEC TV. So Park just absolutely coming out, guns a blazing here in the second half. Three goals to one, two and a half minutes in, causing Wiper Lake to call a timeout. Wiper Lake seemed to really figure out what Park was doing here in the last. 15 minutes or so of the game. Unfortunately now, Park has just started out hot, and that comes down to Quaid just winning the face-offs, press. All right, everybody now, Not let's hear you. Not able to be stopped, working your way towards the net quicker than a lot of White Bear Lake defenders, and, and that really uh, has been the difference here in the second half. Just a little weak, I'm saying, a little weak. Sweet Caroline blasting through the speakers. Always a good time with Sweet Caroline. So we'll have another face off once again. Quaid against Blank. We saw, you know, earlier it was, at the end of the first half, it was Quaid against Dow, best player on each team. Dow is winning them, so I don't know why they've kind of went away from having Dow. The better, the more Dow gets to touch the ball, 
The better chance Wiper Lake has to win. We're gonna have a redo on the face off. Here we go. Quaid once again will win the face off. She'll grab this one out in the air herself. She'll work her way down the far side. She get out to press, press. Lots of room to work with. Gets it in the attack zone. A little miscommunication between her and Cron. Wiper Lake will end up with the ball. And that's Churchill working on the far side. Now she'll get it out to Peterson. Wiper Lake will work it in to the offensive side of the field for them. Aaron pass there, but nonetheless. Peterson mishandles the pass over the middle. She would have a nice shot towards the lane, but we're gonna get a high sticky down park. Peterson's gonna keep the ball where she's at. Gonna have a free shot on the goal here if she wants it. Here we go. She'll rifle it in, nice block there. And they'll throw it in. That's Perrin. Perrin gets her second goal of the night. Just what Wiper Lake needed to answer back. Two goals for Wiper Lake this half. Let's look at it right here. Peterson hits it off the pipe. Cameraman loses it, but we'll see the end here. That one's thrown down in the bottom corner. Bears goal scored by number 24, Lexi Perrin. Some of the girls going nuts in the, in the press box here, the Wiper Lake girls. So down two goals now. Wiper Lake was down by more than that in the first half. They're down by three at one point in time. They came back to cut the lead to one. They're going to need some stingy defense and win some of these face-offs here. Park was just knocking on the door. And then Wiper Lake was able to take, away, take it away from them and work their way down. Once again, Quaid with great stick work. Now Wiper Lake will end up with it. That's Morris on the far side. Great defense there by Park. And Morris will work away in between the defenders. She gets it over to Perrin. Over to Blank. Out to Peterson on the near side. Peterson looking to make something happen. Out to blank, at the top of the key. Top of the exact, he attacks him. Larson's got it now on the far side. Looking for somebody streaking over the middle, doesn't see him. Larson will bring it towards the near side now behind the net. Gets it out to blank, blank with room to work with. Over to Peterson. Aaron pass there, and Park's going to end up with it. Goalie's looking to throw it in. Throws it out to Elton. Elton looking to wait, work her way down the field. This one's going to go to Kron. Kron's got some room to work with. See if she can make something happen. Looking for the goal. Doesn't see it. Just slows it up. Works it out to press. Press is a speedy player. You don't want to give her too much room to work with. And Wiper Lake's kind of playing off of her right now. And press is going to make her move. Quaid now has it at the top. She works her way into the attack zone. Looks like she's going to throw this one in. But a high sticking will give her a shot at the net once again. Lake will end up the ball. And that's number 27, Myla Keller. Peterson's got it now. Working her way down the middle of the field, swinging those elbows. Tries to cut back towards the middle, gets it out to Blank. Blank over to Perrin.
Aaron gets it over to Dow. Dow really quiet this half so far. Dow only with one goal on the night. She gets it over, but she's got a player. And that's number 27, Myla Keller. Just a sophomore, she throws it in. And White Bear Lake has cut the lead to one. Nice pass by Dow over to Keller to get that one in. Well, the replay for you right now. As you see Dow. Over to Keller. And that's what, that's what you like to see if you're White Bear Lake. Cut the lead back to one. Parks had the lead at the whole game ever since they went up two to one early in the first half, about two minutes in. Now it's cut back to one after being down three for White Bear Lake. Keller scoring at 7.30 the period for the Bear. Keller, just a sophomore. Outstanding play for the young one. We have a loose ball here. Blank is gonna get it. We're gonna have a little bit of a high stick in here by Quaid. So Blank will start with the ball right where she's at. Ref telling her she can start a little closer. She gets it over to Dow. Dow looking to make a move. Nice pick there by Churchill. Dow with a nice move. She's looking to score. Gets it over to Keller. Back over to Churchill. Churchill brings it to the top of the attack zone. Looking to make something happen here. Errant pass there by a white bear, trying to get to a little fancy with it. But nonetheless, Churchill's gonna end up with a loose ball on the far side. Gets it back over to Perrin. Perrin with two goals on the night. It's Megan Gavin over there. Throw it, tries to throw it to Dow. Looks like we're gonna have a penalty here by White Bear, and it's gonna be Park's ball. It's Waters now, she'll work her way down the far side for Park. Loose ball. Picked up by Taryn Leonard. Leonard gets it to press. Quaid's got it now. Back to press, nice little pass there, nice catch by press. Press looking to make something happen. She has three goals in the night. Quaid has it now. Working her way behind the net. Over to press on the near side behind the net. Back over to Quaid. Quaid's looking to take this one herself, and she does. Nice stop there by the White Bear Lake defense, but she gets it over to Press. Press is going to use her speed, loses the ball. Picked up by White Bear Lake. Nope, still loose. Now it is. Going to work it over to Keller. Keller's working her way down the far side. Nice play by White Bear Lake to get it out of their offensive, or get it out of Park's offensive zone. Keller throws over the middle for Dow. Dow's going to have a shot, and she's got it. All tied up here at White Bear Lake Stadium. What a swing of events there for White Bear Lake when it looked like Quaid and, and Press were just playing with the White Bear Lake defense. They take it away. Waters works way down the field, throws it to Dow. Dow with outstanding, outstanding stick vision, stick handling. Gets, it, gets the pass. Throws it right in there. Beautiful play. That's Dow's second goal of the night. 23rd goal of the year. Gives her 25 points on the year. And as we talked about, if White Bear Lake wants to win this game, Dow's got to really get in it. And this crowd is going is going a little bit nuts here. With the face off here is what a blank 
against Quaid. No, that's not Quaid, excuse me. That's Michaud. Press has got it, she's looking towards the net. Slapped away by the defender. Waters will have it now. Cons has it now, she gets it out to Michaud. Now it's going to be worked out behind the net. Cons has it. Cons slowly working it, looking for somebody over the middle towards the net. Nothing going. Cons brings it towards the top, the attack zone. Trying to work her way towards the middle. Nothing but great defense by White Bear Lake. Leonard's got it now behind the net. Nothing going. She'll lose the ball here. Bad turnover there for Leonard. But it's not. She, she gets it back. Now goes over to Elton. Elton looking to wank her move. She'll throw it in towards the net. Great stop there. By Johansson. Elton's got it now. Gets it back out to Michaud. Out to Press. Press looking to make her move. That's stopped by Johansson. Langer has it now. And they're working their way down. We're going to way down the far side of the field. Wiper like slowing it down just a little bit. Larson's got it. Or excuse me, not Larson. Morris. Morrison gets it over to Blank. Blank misses the shot. It'll be picked back up by Park. Park's looking to switch the defensive side, trying to get back on offense. They'll work it down. They got some numbers. That's press, press. Has the speed and the quickness. She's looking to shoot. Excuse me, that's not press, that's Waters. Waters one-on-one -on -one with the defender. Gets it over to Quaid. Quaid's got room. Looks like we have a penalty here on White Bear Lake. We have a one-on-one -on -one here, Quaid versus Johansson. Quaid's won this one more times than not tonight. And she throws it in too easy. Quaid gets her third goal of the night. Her 32nd of the year. And you just see this one. She takes it all the way into the crease. Waits for it. One-on-ones -on against goal. You really can't stop that if you're Johansson. And Quaid's showing you why she's one of the better players in the state and leads this team to the record that they have. She'll get set for the faceoff here against Blank. Park regains the lead. Nine to eight. 12 minutes left to go here in the second half. Quaid will win that one. White Bear Lake will come up with it. Quaid picks the ball back up. She gets the loose ball, looking to make something going on here. Streaking towards the net. She's going to fire it in there. Bounces it in, and that's another goal by Quaid. Two goals in the last 20 seconds here. Quaid gets Park's lead back up by two. The replay for you guys here shortly. Outstanding play by Quaid. You knew that she was going to take this the whole time. They gave her a little too much space. She just throws it in there over the defenders, bouncing it in. 
past Johansson. If you're Johansson, can't be too happy with the way your defenders have played in the last, uh, well, last minute or so. Here. Scored by number eight, Kayla Quaid. Quaid scoring at 13 17 of the period for the Wolfpack. Quaid's four goals. Gets her up to 33 on the year. Swiper Lake needs an answer back. Quaid once again. Mostly wins the face off, but Wiper Lake will end up with it. That's Morris. Morris working on the far side towards the sideline. Swarming defense. So she'll work it out towards the middle. Lots of spins here. Perrin will get it. Gets it out to Coons. Coons works it towards the middle. She's looking like she wants to make something happen here. Coons now has it behind the net. She gets it to Dow. Dow trying to find a something. Nope, she'll work her way back towards the top. Coons got it now. Blank has it on the top of the attack zone on the far side. Back to Blank. Blank has it now. Perrin's got it now. Perrin, errant pass. Quaid's going to end up with it. Park's looking to go the other way. Oh, Perrin's going to get this one. Loose ball. Peterson ends up with it for White Bear. Dow streaks over the middle, nothing going. Peterson maintains it. She gets it over to Perrin. Perrin works it on the far side. Back over to Dow. Dow keeps it herself. She brings it on the near side behind the goal. Tries to find something going. This one's taken away. That one by Emma Henderson of Park. She's going to work her way down the near side. Loses the ball for a second. It looks like we're going to get a penalty here. So Park will maintain possession. And here we go. So streaking down the field with it. That's number 37, 80 Steinke. She gets it over to Cron. Now Quaid's got it. Quaid's behind the net. Looks like we're gonna get a penalty here. And White Bear Lake will take the ball. A little bit of contact there on that last play. Wiper Lake will have it now. Foul on Park. That's Larson, Tasha. Just a freshman working the ball. She goes over to Blank. Blank trying to find something going. Gets it over to Peterson, and Peterson can handle a pass. She doesn't. She picks it back up. It's over to Perrin. Perrin working down the far side. She has room. Sugar behind the net. Looks like she'll get this to Dow. 7.55 left to go here in the second half. Pass there for White Bear Lake by Dow. And this one's going to be picked up by Park. They had numbers going the other way. Stanky has it. She works her way out to the far side, regroup a little bit. She gets it over to Quaid. Quaid picks it up. 
Gets over to Press. Press looking to attack. Loses it. Looks like we're going to have a penalty here on White Bear. Seven minutes left to go here in the second half. Press starts the penalty out. Another penalty here against White Bear Lake and Press will start out with it on the far side. She'll have a wide open lane to the net if she wants it. And she does, she takes it in. We have another high sticking penalty here. Press will start out with it once again. bring Churchill out of the game. And Press will have it. Press will looking to make something happen. Hits it off the top of the crossbar, nothing going. So Lawrence will have it behind the net. Now in front. Loses the ball. Wiper Lake's got it. Still going to maintain Wiper Wiper ball. That's Peterson. Blank gets it out. She'll run down the field with it. Defenders in tail. Works it on the far side now. Over to Larson. Larson brings it on the near side. Over to Peterson behind the net. Or excuse me, that's Dow. Dow finds a player. Gets it to Peterson. Peterson striking in front of the net. Nice pass there from Tasha Larson, the freshman, to hit Peterson in stride right in front of the net. Too easy for Peterson to score. And they're only down by one, folks. 5.35 left to go here in the second half. Wiper Lake cuts the lead to one. We'll see it right here. Let's look at this pass from Larson. Gets Peterson. Peterson just creeps in behind the defenders into the middle of the attack zone, right in the crease, and throws it in there. Peterson with her second goal of the game, scored at 1925 for the Bears. Peterson's second goal of the game here. Goals coming from all over. Dow with two, Peterson with two, and Perrin with two. Folks, we want to remind you to always can always follow us on social media. As you can see, that kid is right now on Facebook.com slash SCCTV or Twitter.com, Instagram, or YouTube. Or you can tweet at me, at John SCCTV. We're always looking for social media posts for our social media montage that we run on our Sports Path episode. So if you guys want to tweet at us, we're always looking for various things that go on within our Fab Four schools. And what a game we have here, folks. Uh, I did not expect this game to be this close. A great park team. Coming into Wiper Lake Stadium. Wiper Lake under Coach Dunnigan, keeping up with Scott Leonard and the Wolfpack. We'll get ready for the faceoff. Quaid likely go against uh, Blank. Quaid has to have outstanding numbers on faceoffs. Quaid came into this game with 37 points. Four goals tonight will get her up to 41 in 12 games. So she's averaging a little under three points a game. Or a little over three points a game, excuse me. Here we go. Journey blasting to the speakers. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. 
Quay to win it. Parks got it. Press will have the ball. Press will be going the other way. Here we go. Press runs with it, looking to score. Press have an outstanding game tonight. Three goals, one behind Press's or one behind Quaid's team leading four. Quaid looking to make something happen. Nothing going, double teamed. Gets it out to number 25, Cons. Cons back to Quaid behind the net. Quaid finds it a, a player over the middle, but that player loses it. Wiper Lake will end up with it. That's Langer. Langer will get to Larson. Larson lose it. Press will end up with it for Park. She'll get it out to Elton. Elton with one goal tonight. She'll work it in. She's going to have a shot on the net. Nice block there by Johansson. Great save and just what White Bear Lake needed. 4.15 left to go here in the second half. White Bear Lake lo looking to make something work on the offensive side. Blank will have it. Penalty called, so she'll start off right there with four minutes left to go. Ref a little slow with that whistle. Blank not looking pleased, but she gets it off to Churchill. There's going to be another penalty. Clock keeps going. Churchill will have it now. Wide open, middle of the lane. She'll pass it off to Dow. Dow looking to make something happen. Dow works towards the middle. Slowing it up just a little bit. Gets it up back out to Blank. Blank still has it at the top. Tries to find Dow over the middle. Loose ball. Dow ends back up with it. She's looking to score. Nothing going. Swarming defense by Park. We're going to get high sticking here against Dow. Park did it against, or made the penalty against Dow, so it's going to stay Wiper Lake ball. And Dow's going to have an open shot towards the net. Here we go. Dow throws it in, misses it off the crossbar. Perrin will pick it up on the far side. Missed chance there by Dow. So Wiper Lake works it behind the net. Larson on the near side. Missed opportunity there. Another nice block there by the Park goaltender. Came in over, only averaging four goals allowed per game. She has a nice pass out. And that's Leonard, and Leonard's going to swing Park to the offensive side real quick. Looks like almost high sticking there. Nonetheless, Quaid has it now. Penalty there by Blank. Park works it on the near side. Over to Cron. Cron working it behind the net now on the far side. Quaid tries to handle the pass, but it's loose and Wiper Lake's gonna get it. Parents got it, 1.30 left to go. Wiper Lake needs to maintain possession, get it out of the defensive side, and get something happening and get a shot on goal. And I don't know what Morris was doing, but she just fell down and she had a wide open offensive player there to throw the ball to and she chose to hold on to it. That could be the backbreaker for Wiper Lake. Yeah, Crone's got it. White Park just has to One minute keep it on the offensive out. side of the ball. One minute remaining and it looks like Park's and that's exactly what they're going to try to do. You got a speedy 
player like Press gets it out to Elton. Piper Lake's gonna have to play some close defense. Slap the ball out of the hands. We get it over to Quaid. Over to Press. I think this is gonna be it, folks. We have another penalty here, but clock's gonna keep, the clock does stop. Park's still gonna work it on the far side. That's Elton. Elton did have a wide open lane in the middle, but she's perfectly content with running out the clock. Another stoppage of play here. A yellow card against Sydney Peterson. Peterson, just a sophomore, had two goals tonight. Another penalty here by White Bear Lake. 19.4 seconds left to go. Elton has it on the far side. Just looking to play keep away here. I think that's what's going to happen. Park's going to run this one out, and they're going to win 10 to 9. And that's it, folks. Missed opportunities by White Bear Lake there in the last couple minutes. Score, Come back to haunt them. And they fall to Park of Cottage Grove 10 to 9. Great job, ladies. And Park will move to 6 and 1 in conference, 11 and 1 overall. And White Bear Lake moves to 1 and 5 in conference, 2 and 7 overall. Next up for White Bear, they'll play Eastridge on the 17th. And Park plays Stillwater a week from tonight. Well, we'd like to thank you all for joining us here tonight on SCC TV. And you guys all have a good night.